Unless you are the boss, you probably have very little say in who you work with. Sure, you could leave if you don't like it, but it's tough to leave the paycheck or the benefits behind these days. But if you are being bullied at work, leaving or taking it may be your only options. Sexual harassment and employee discrimination to varying degrees have been met by laws and regulations meant to guarantee a minimum of protections for working Americans. But what about protections? for the supposedly 25% of working people who report being bullied in the workplace. Well, the bullied are hardly alone in feeling like they are on their own when it comes to being mistreated at work. Discrimination on the basis of factors like gender, race, national origin are strictly prohibited in the work uh, workplace. But start talking mental illness and you quickly find yourself in a gray area. Those with a diagnosed mental illness often feel stigmatized, but many oppose strict protections for the mentally ill, focusing instead on the threats inherent with feeling forced to work alongside those who might be mentally unstable or outright dangerous. Now, I'm going to have much more on that a little later in the show when we catch up with former Congressman Patrick Kennedy, once a rising star in one of America's most powerful political dynasties. But back to bullying, and I'm not talking about a bad day at work. We all have those. This is repeated emotional and even at times physical abuse by one co-worker of another employee. In other words, the schoolyard bully has now graduated to the wor workplace. Now, until recently, it's been largely a silent epidemic. But after the six foot five, 300 pound professional football player Jonathan Martin left the Miami Dolphins in 2013, amid accusations of teammate bullying, the phenomena has been attracting more attention. This year alone, 11 anti workplace bullying laws have been introduced in 10 states. But for now, victims of workplace bullying still have no legal recourse. Kim Carner graduated from law school in 2007, filled with the promise of a bright future, landing her dream job as a prosecutor in Williamson County, Texas. They seemed excited to have me. I was almost hired on the spot, so I thought it was gonna be uh, the beginning of something great. And at first it was. I loved being in court. I mean, I was really proud of myself, especially when I won my first case. But while Kim was continuing to win cases, she was failing to win over a fellow prosecutor. He would do everything in his power to make every day of my life just pure hell. He would, you know, he would yell at me for being one minute late. He would um, tell me that I did something wrong that I didn't really do wrong. He would blame me for things that he did and everyone would believe him. More than one in four workers in the U.S. reports being bullied by a co-worker or boss, according to a recent survey from the Workplace Bullying Institute. Workplace bullying may be direct, such as repeated yelling and verbal humiliation, hostile glares, or silence and deliberate exclusion. 80% of those surveyed reported debilitating anxiety, 30% PTSD, and 49% suffered a clinical depression. I definitely was depressed, had insane anxiety. I, I'd wake up every morning with a stomach ache. And I was supposed to be this powerful, important person in the courtroom, and I cried in my office more than I care to admit. Kim tried to talk to her tormentor as well as her boss, but the relentless bullying continued until finally a breaking point. He was yelling at me for something and he didn't like my reaction because I wasn't, you know, apologizing and, you know, begging for forgiveness. And he started cursing and he took a, a whiteout, one of the whiteout things, and threw it at me. Fearing for her safety, Kim quit, joining the ranks of the roughly 20% of bullied employees who leave their jobs. It was one of the most horrible experiences of my professional life. Craig Clayton left his ad sales position at a Florida radio station after months of abuse from an unlikely bully. We used to call her the Black Widow because we were absolutely convinced she ate her young. This had to be almost 20 years ago, but it feels like it was yesterday. It's almost as though there's a scab that has barely healed. 
At six foot four, 260 pounds, Craig is a prime example of how the workplace bully can defy stereotypes. The woman that was bullying me was African American as well, about four foot 11, and it wasn't about physical intimidation at all. There's a certain amount of power that comes along with a boss that's bullying someone that knows they can hold that paycheck over your head. Craig says he endured the abuse because he was raising a son on his own. Every comment from her was personal, demeaning. I understand you're a single dad. You know the state can come take your child back from you if I fire you. And it was everything you could possibly imagine went to that extreme. Like Kim Carner, Craig was actually excelling at his job. They're bullying the person that is the top producer, which is counterintuitive. But the reason they do it is because they're bullying the person that the boss feels threatened by. If Craig sounds like an expert, that's because he is. 40% of the people being targeted never say a word. Craig's clients, which include several Fortune 500 companies, declined to appear on camera. Instead, we watched the workplace consultant rehearse his seminar. Just because a manager has a bad day doesn't mean they're bullying you. One of the real distinguishers around bullying is that the behavior is repeated over and over and over. So the first thing for me would be to get organizations at that senior level to understand how to take ownership of it. But a lot of them are hesitant to even brand the behavior as bullying. The financial cost of bullying to U.S. business is between six and $13 billion per year. That includes decreased productivity and increased absenteeism. It destroys creativity, increases employee turnover. Workplace bullying awareness videos like this one are being purchased by companies from Walmart to Carnival Cruise Lines. Catherine Mattis became a workplace bullying consultant after an eye-opening experience as an HR manager at a financial assistance nonprofit. I did get a lot of complaints, a lot of people crying in my office because of interacting with the bully. Catherine was stymied by her boss's refusal to confront the workplace oppressor. He had been there for a long time, and I think, and, and that's pretty standard situation in a bullying scenario, that the bully is seen as somebody who uh, is needed and a high performer as well. And there was nothing I could do unless the president gave me the okay. It's not illegal. Legislators in 29 states have introduced some form of the Healthy Workplace Bill, which holds employers accountable for on-the-job bullying. I need the photocopier now, you get it? But currently, workplace bullying is not explicitly illegal, kind of moron? unless it's specific to behaviors such as sexual or racial harassment. Telling somebody, pick up the mask. Eyes 55, nose 15, measure passes. A handful of states have passed related laws. California's AB 2053 mandates that prevention of abusive conduct be included in existing workplace sexual harassment training. AB 2053 will simply include abusive conduct into this training. In other words, workplace bullying. San Diego Assemblyman Brian Jones voted against it. How do you define workplace bullying? That's one of the, the problems with this bill is how do you define what's bullying and how do you define, you know, what's uh, banter between two adults? Those opposed to anti-workplace bullying laws say they would unleash a torrent of frivolous lawsuits. This has happened since the beginning of time of people bullying other people. But making it illegal or, or requiring this type of training isn't, isn't going to change that. This is not a suck it up situation. I want people to know that that's not okay and they need to do something about it. After she resigned, in true lawyer fashion, Kim Carner painstakingly documented her ordeal. Seven pages of agonizing details that she gave to her boss. Because I had written it down and I had that kind of proof, then she felt comfortable enough to fire him. People started coming out of the woodwork. Secretaries, support staff, defense attorneys, former employees. Like all of these people that I knew that were saying that he did similar things to them. And I was like, you saw this happening. Why did you not say something until now? Now, despite getting her coworker fired, Kim had no desire to return to her job at the DA's office. She's currently doing legal temp work, which she said she enjoys since it involves going through documents and no interaction with coworkers.
Well, people like Kim are looking for legal recourse to help them fight back against bullies without fear of getting fired. But coming up, I'll talk to a man who says changing the law won't do a thing. We're back in two minutes.